Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and first of all I would like to thank all my Patreon and YouTube supporters for their backing. If you are not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. But now, Immersion RC Ghost. Yes, yeah, something that showed up in the internet when the first people got their information or were allowed to reveal anything about the Immersion RC Ghost two weeks ago, the first half of the uh, August 2020. So far, so far what we've seen with the ghost is that the Joshua Bardwell did a long interview with the guy behind it and I also know that the Painless 360 also did an interview, interview with the guy. And there is some, um, I would say, like to interest in the technology, some maybe misconceptions and not a lot of the details were so far relieved. Yes, almost everything that is, can be made public was revealed during the Joshua Bardwell's interview, but it's kind of long, so I will. I decided I will just make the my interpretation of a facts because we know which kind of the technology this thing is using uh, something about the capabilities and something about well let's say general vision and does this thing makes even sense because i already hear that a lot of people complaining that oh 2.4 gigahertz it just sucks why not to just put a power amplifier on the the uh, xjt from the free sky and have the same ranges well, no it's not really working like that so let's begin from the beginning the immersion rc ghost is basically the same technology on the hardware level, on the radio chipset level, as the ta -dam -ta -dam, TBS Crossfire and FreeSky R9. Because the heart of all of those systems are the chipsets from Semtech company, which owns the LoRa modulation, because all of them use the LoRa modulation. Uh, chirps, spritz, Chirp spread spectrum modulation, which offers a very high receiver sensibility and ability to pick up signals that are below the noise floor. As a result, the Ghost uses the newest generation of the Semtec chipset, while the Crossfire and the R9 uses the SX1270 something, because for example, Crossfire uses 72 while the R9 is 78 or 79, I don't remember. The Immersion RC Ghost uses the SX1280 or SX1281. I bet it's the second one because it's slightly cheaper and comparing to the SX80, it lacks the possibility of the ranging. So, you, so the receiver knows the range between the transmitter. So this is kind of cool, but I think if the Immersion RC would put 1280, they would advertise this functionality from the beginning because it kind of offers you kind of interesting stuff. For example, you know where your uh, drone or airplane landed without any GPS because you know the distance. You know if you are walking in the correct direction. So this is kind of cool, almost a killer feature, but they are not advertising that. So I think, but this is only my wild, uh, my wild guess, educated guess, that this is SX1281. Next, let me check something else because I have a conspect prepared so I, I know what I'm talking about. So, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, no, 2.4 gigahertz is not the same 2.4 gigahertz as, for example, traditional FreeSky uses. It's a different modulation, the same modulation, this almost the same ranging possibilities as with the crossfire also limited power which is by the way also kind of good because trust me you don't have to fly with one or two watts of output power this kind of really makes no sense so bottom line almost the same technology next this is very interesting the transmitter module on the immersion rc ghost has two antennas and it's not really 100 percent clear which kind of the antenna switching um, setup is used over there. From the interview of the Joshua Bardwell, I thought, I think that this is the antenna switching with the RSSI uh, measurement of, based on the telemetry and the antenna switching uh, before the radio chipset. So the 
transmitter no switch antenna should get better reception on the receiver because the telemetry was received with the better RSSI so something like that it's not MIMO it's not uh, two separate uh, radio systems put into the one transmitter it's rather um, one more time an educated guess on the hands of the transmitter which one of the antennas will probably give a better reception on the trans on the receiver and also pick up slightly better signal on the telemetry uh, the MIMO or even better two separate radio radio systems would be better but probably this work as, works as well and that also means that at one point of the time only one of those two antennas is used uh, next um, the receivers uh, they are called ATO receivers and they are pretty 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 small more or less the size of the nano from the crossfire and the uh, R9MM from the FreeSky R9 system maybe you know maybe slightly smaller slightly bigger but this is still the same general form factor and um, what else to say about them they say that they, they can do s bus they can do s bus fast which is this modification of the s bus first used by the dji apv system they can do the new gs ghst from ghost protocol and also can run the ppm mode but why would you run, would like to run the ppm mode so let's, let's just forget about the ppm mode and uh, what else what else oh it's bloody, bloody fast uh, the uh, immersion rc says that ghost is capable of running 222 hertz updates so 222 times per second the receiver gets the stick position and one of the other channels because the sticks position are from what I, from what they say they are sent always while the switches and other channel are sent only from time to time because usually you do not really need that fast update rate on the switches because you flip the switch and if the delay is like 20 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds you will probably never really feel any difference so one more time this is relatively good thing and and fine however the 222.222 Hertz is available only in the pure race mode which allows for no telemetry as soon as you would like to have some kind of the telemetry and for example get the RSSI then yeah kinda you have to live with the lower refresh rates and still it will fly just fine because trust me you do don't need 200 uh, Hertz refresh rate to be honest for majority of the users they will not feel the difference between 50 and 100 or even 30 and 60 so let's let's be really realistic about that however it's there it's the it's the high number it's a definitely a feature that will help with the sales and uh, yeah uh, there are also some of the negative things about ghost first of all ghost is not yet supported by the open tx so if you will even get the ghost somehow because they will ship it or you will get the sample or whatever there is you will not be able really to use it with the standard open tx radio because the support on the open tx side for the immersion rc ghost is something that will be released with one of the future releases of the open tx i'm not sure which one maybe 2310 or maybe 2311 really hard to guess right now by the way this is exactly the same problem of the Flysky FRM 302 is facing right now because they also have right now the hardware and that can work in the PPM mode but you do not want to work in the PPM mode however you cannot really set up anything on the on the transmitter uh, because well uh, it's just not there it could work in the SBUS mode but then with the SBUS mode you do not have possibility to uh, set the power or any settings from the open tx and the update rate rather will not allow you to get this crazy fast uh, 222 hertz update so for the proper open tx support we still probably will have to wait slightly longer than for the hardware which 
immersionary ghost is. Oh, by the way, this is also something interesting. There is this special version of the ghost when more or less you can order any frequency you want because they will just um, put a different matching network circuit into the board, lower the frequency, and for example, you have a ghost running at 433 if you really want to do it. Do you really want to do it? Yeah, probably really like, like not. So, so um, I really think that the 2.4 GHz LoRa systems are the next best thing in the remote control world because they are shorter antennas, faster updates and less problems than with the 900 MHz and I really do vouch for him. However, mm, not however, I do have right now in, during the in the test the FRM302 from the Fly Sky and if anyone from Immersion RC maybe listens or someone who watches this knows someone on the Immersion RC I'd like to get one. If you can get me one, please let me know. I would like to get one of the Ghost because I'm really like almost hyped about this new technology that 2.4 uh, LoRa, uh, 2.4 gigahertz LoRa offers, and I really would like to. Uh, but okay, uh, reality is uh, like it is. Okay, so um, I think we will end it over here. I hope now you have the general overview what. Immersion RC Ghost can offer to you and too bad I cannot show you any real pictures of it and uh, all you can see are some pictures from the internet but at least we know what's inside and what it is capable of. Okay, so thank you very much for watching until the next one. Bye bye.